My name is Ben Mitchell. I am the Director of Employee Relations and Training. This is my 21st year in the district. I started out as a para in the district, became a teacher, head basketball coach, assistant principal, principal, and now I get to work with this illustrious young man right here, and everybody knows Keith Reynolds, don't they? But they wish they didn't. <laughs> <laughs> this, is a, this is one of the nicest guys to have a tough job like he has. If Keith is coming to see you for professional reasons, you better pray. All right? You better pray. Thank you. All right. Our topics that we're going to cover, boundaries and ethics, customer service, performance, attendance, and we want to leave a little time for questions if you have questions. Boundaries and ethics. Every time we start a new employee orientation, we mention these three things. Parents trust us every day with their most precious commodity, their children. Second, the community has high expectations for the Wichita Public Schools and its employees. We're the fourth largest employer in Wichita. And then lastly, the established expectations regarding conduct and boundaries in the workplace are put in place to protect you. I always kind of stop on this one and say parents send us their best kids. I mean, parents don't keep their best kids at home and just send them out on picture day. They send you the best kids they have all the time. And sometimes we find they're not, they don't act very well. All right? But we need those stable people, like everybody in this room, that's going to pr provide some grace and some truth and help the administrators out and help the teachers out keep the place clean so that they can function. We talk about these things as it relates to being disciplined and or terminated. These things can get you in trouble. Inappropriate conduct inside or outside of work. Oftentimes when we have new employees and I have young people, they're kind of looking like, what do you mean outside of work? And I go back to something I learned from an assistant principal and a teacher here, Sue Parks. She used to always say, keep your side of the street clean. All right? That means in your personal life, if you're doing the right things, if you're not getting DUIs, if you don't have court dates, if you don't have a whole lot of things that are complicating your life, then you can get to your job. But if you have a whole lot of things that are complicating your life, what is it going to do? End up, I got to take off to do this. I got to do that. I can't be at work. I'm in jail can't work if you're in jail. All right? So then, go ahead. And Sorry. right now, ladies and gentlemen, the two top things that are causing issues, domestic violence as well as gun charges. So in domestic violence situations, you're going to have it to where as long as you go to court and different other things that are in compliance with court orders, we're good with you. With gun issues, we're not just talking about, you know, possession of guns and different things and with the leniency that we have in the state of Kansas, but we're talking about what people are doing with these guns that are causing violations and coming to our attention that we have to address. And those are things happening outside the workplace. Lack of emotional control that can lead to allegations of intimidation, threats, harassment, retaliation, workplace bullying. In my 20, 21 years in the district, I've worked with middle, elementary, and high. What I notice now that I'm working with virtually all adults is many adults have the same social and emotional maturity as some of the kids I work with. They get pissy and they get upset when things don't go right. They don't know how to maintain professionalism. They get too close with people and then they fall out with them. Maintain a good, safe, professional boundary with everybody that you work with. Inappropriate communications, comments, discussions, rumors, innuendo, sharing personal information, verbal, written, cyber, and social media. Social media is one of the new frontiers that can get you fired. I had a principal call me just recently saying that he had some mean girls at his school. And he wasn't talking about middle school girls or high school girls. He was talking about some of the adults that are putting stuff on social media about their other female uh, co-workers. And now the female co-workers are a little afraid. They don't want to go to the teacher's lounge. They take a wide route to get wherever they got to go because they know on social media these other people are talking bad about me. So be careful what you say on social media because it can come back to get you if people feel harassed or threatened by your comments. Let me add this. Also, when it comes to lack of emotional control, sometimes we're getting into situations where we're having conflicts with our customers. You're talking about students, parents, or your coworkers. There's a right and wrong way to address those issues. What we're asking people to do to protect yourself is to go through the, pro the proper uh, channels, talk to your supervisor, talk to your principal, and have them to address those things on your behalf because we cannot afford to have you wrestling with a parent or a kid in the middle of the hallway during passing period. Also, when it comes to inappropriate communication, 
be very careful about your communication when you are using the, the school system's email. It's, it's easily traced. And not only do you have to be careful about your content, if it has nothing to do with business and, and it takes a lot of time, you can be held accountable for that as well. We've, we've dinged some people for shopping online and booking trips and they were travel agents and they were doing one job at the, at the same time they were doing their district job. So you got to be very careful. Or sharing too many details about their weekend adventure with grave details that didn't work out well through our system. <laughs> Next, failure to maintain safe boundaries, inappropriate touch or physical interactions in the workplace. Mr. Reynolds has dealt with this a lot more than me, but we have a lot of adults, especially our male adults, who see a nice young lady that works in the building and they get too chummy with them or they want to touch them inappropriately and now they no longer work with us. So it is important to be friendly with everybody, but you're not kids' friends, all right? You are the professional in the building that's helping to educate them, okay? They step too far into your zone, let them know, hey, I'm the adult here, you're the kid here, we gotta have safe boundaries. Another thing to help protect you, if you don't know new staff, new students to protect yourself, high five, fist bump, and handshake until that person knows that your actions are not, you know, taking unwelcome advances towards them. With a person that you've worked with for years or a student that's been at that school for years, they know you. New people may not. So your interaction with one may not be acceptable with a different person who's not aware of who you are. So be careful in those instances as well. Here's a big piece right here that uh, I have to work with a lot as it relates to performance management, neglecting work duties. Okay? Not being in your assigned area, not supervising, excessive absences, tardies, extended breaks, lunch, and a cell phone. One of you all's compatriots next Friday is going to get fired. Why is he going to get fired? Because he takes his lunch and his breaks, he puts them all together, he's on the clock, he leaves the building, and he goes socializes and drinks with his, with his coworkers. We've also had other examples where we've had people who are on the clock, they're in the parking lot listening to music, they're in the parking lot washing their cars, they're on the clock and they've gone to the club or to the bar, and we wouldn't have known they was at the bar until they got stabbed at the bar, which means they couldn't come back to work. On those situations, and other situations that are boundary issues to where if your significant other is going to bring you lunch, we have no problem with that. But certain other things that they provide for you during your break, those things should be happening in the privacy of your home, not at work. So, and I'll let you read between the lines on some of those violations. Now, speaking of bringing our significant others, when we bring our entire family up to the building and we have them in the fax room and we're washing clothes and drying clothes and making food at the school, the, food, the school's food, that's not going to end well for employees, okay? So we can't play house at the school. Not meeting reasonable work expectations or requests. Learn to be flexible and be a team player. I have said this to every custodian at every session. I've worked side by side with you, okay? One of my best trainers was Reggie Taylor, who retired from this building. One of my next best trainers was Pat when I was at North High. I learned from everybody. I learned how they interact with the people above them and below them. So it is important, important, important to be flexible. So if you have that teacher that's a diva and they always need something and they need you to do it and you got a whole lot of other things that you got to do, communicate with them. Ma'am, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll get to that as soon as I can. Let me take care of this. We got an assembly and I got to do this and then I'll come back to your room and I'll help you with that. Communicate effectively with them. All right, and then the last piece we have right here, weapons, drugs, violence, harassment, bullying, and fighting. Those are the things that get our students suspended or expelled, and those are the things that can get you terminated or disciplined severely, okay? Customer service. Question, who are our customers? Answer, anybody who can complain about your service. Keeping and providing world-class customer service. Acknowledge your customer, again, when you got that demanding teacher in the, where your run is, hey, I'm going to get to you as soon as I can, all right? But you know what the main things are that you have to do, so try your best to get those done, but then come back and help that teacher if you say you're going to help them. Professionalism, no matter how the customer acts, remain respectful and patient. 
I know you probably come in contact with a few teachers and you can kind of tell they don't even like you in their room. Or you come in contact with a few teachers that they want to chat you up and tell you everything that's going on in their personal life. Keep it the same no matter who you're dealing with. I'm going to stay quiet. I'm going to do my job. Hey, that's great information. Don't divulge a lot of your own personal information. If you're in there working and they want to tell you all about, okay, that's good. Okay, that's good. Hey, you have a nice day and keep on moving. All right? Because the worm will turn. If you get too close with them, what will happen is then now you know some things about them or now they're dating somebody new and they don't want to talk to you at all and they'll say, well, he looks at me wrong or he stays in my room too long or he's not cleaning my room like he should. And then now you got some issues. So keep professional boundaries with everybody that you serve. Follow through. If you say you're going to do something, do it. Don't ever overcommit and underdeliver. Mistakes. We all make mistakes. Accept them, correct them, learn from them, and move on. Feedback. Be receptive to feedback. Use it to grow. And especially if you supervise somebody, your tone is more important than the message that you're giving them. Okay? So if you raise your hand if you supervise somebody in this room. You have somebody that you supervise in your building. Okay, be respectful with your tone. If they can't get it right, have a conversation with them and your administrator and say, I've had these conversations with them over and over. They're not getting it. I think we might need the assistive process. But have that conversation with them beforehand. Hey, you're really not working out. You know, especially, and I will tell you, if you have somebody you supervise and they're on their 90-day probation and you work with them, work with them, work with them, and they don't get it right, suggest to your principal that we need to go ahead and cut the cord and get somebody in here that's going to be able to work for us. Because once they're benefited employees, it's going to be hard to get rid of them then. Okay? So it's important to manage them before they get to that point. And then the last piece back there, be a good listener. Learn to repeat back a customer's request and always keep the customer in the loop. Simon Sinek says, customers will never love a company until the employees love it first. Has anybody seen the United uh, Airlines issue that's going on right now? Yeah. Okay, so everybody, all, all of us are focused on how they treated that guy. Here's what I focused in on. Do you know why they were, why they were replacing those passengers? They wanted to get their employees on the plane. So what does that tell you about uh, United? They put their employees above their customers right there. You never should do that. All right? So whatever they get bad that happens to them or however they need to make that up, they need to make it up because they made bad decisions all along the path. Performance. Performance management is not bullying or harassment if it's done in a professional, respectful manner and improvement is your goal. So everybody that raised their hands that supervise, uh, supervises others, be respectful in your tone, be professional, and don't make it personal. If you want them to improve, the input that you're giving them, the feedback that you're giving them is about improvement. Take pride in your work, stay in your lane, be a team player, maintain your composure, work like you're on probation. That's a Keith Reynolds line right there. Work like you're on probation. When we're on probation, we do everything right, don't we? We dot every I, we cross every T. So work like that all the time and perform to your customers' anticipated standards. I kind of stopped on this one on stay, on your, stay in your lane because I am sure that a lot of you all went to work, you've been at your building for a long time, but you've got a new administrator. Raise your hand if you've got a new administrator any time you've been there. Things change a little bit when you get a new administrator, don't they? Okay? Some of them know everything, don't, don't they? And you know more than them. Okay? So what you have to do is be able to contract your lane when you get somebody that knows everything. But what do they find out? That you guys know where everything is in the building and you're the go-to person, then your lane can expand again. So be able to adjust to adults and their quirks and how they do things. Time clock violations. Now these are time clock violations that don't relate to your personal time off. We're going to talk about that in just a little bit. These are time clock violations. These are, I would consider them like paper cuts. After a while, you get enough paper cuts, you're going to find yourself out the door because you're not clocking in and out right, okay? You're coming in late, but see what you do is you know that the clock is always going to be minus seven or plus seven. That's for payroll purposes. If you're supposed to show up at three, don't come at 3.05 because an administrator can mark you tardy for coming in at 3.05 even though the clock rounds back to three, all right? So it is important to know also, and I know how things work, clerical people help to approve your time, right? 
quite often they have to do the time. Most of I was one of the administrators. What am I supposed to do? Okay, check the box. I would do that. It's the clerical people that know their time a lot better and they approve time. Okay, if you're constantly having incorrect punches, missed punches, not clocking in, clocking out right, you're on a one, two, three, four step out the door process. So it's important to know, show up on time, even be a little early. I would suggest to you, if your report time is, is 6 a.m., get there at 5.55 and clock in at 5.55 rather than clock in at 6.05 every day and then get caught up in that whole tardy piece. I thought you had a seven-minute That's for payroll purposes, not for actual time you're supposed to report. So what I'm saying is, if you get some stickler administrator or supervisor that says you were late, you were tardy, you came two minutes late, they could actually ding you with a verbal warning because you were two minutes late. Okay, so for payroll purposes, the clock is plus or minus seven minutes, but for when you're supposed to report, get there on time. Let me add this as well, ladies and gentlemen. There are two things that are causing issues presently. One, clocking in and then leaving is causing issues, or clocking out and continuing to work. If you find out that you need more time to work, you know, Mr. Welch is a good person to talk to about assisting you with uh, time studies if you need more time. But in these cases, you shouldn't have to clock out and continue to work. There may be a problem there. That problem may range to you just don't have enough of time to do the task, or it may arrange to your time management may be a little off. So those are things that we're ca catching problems with when it comes to clocking in and clocking out for those reasons as well. And I've suggested this, having worked in buildings, if you've clocked out for the day and somebody says, hey, I need you to go do this, communicate respectfully. Hey, I've clocked out for the day. Is that something I can possibly do tomorrow for you? And if they go, oh, okay, we'll do it tomorrow. No, I need you to go get it done today. Then go back, oh, I'll, I'll get it done for you. Go back and clock in. If you're working, get paid for it, all right? But always communicate with your supervisors, with your administrators, if you're getting close to going overtime. Hey, I'm getting close to being overtime. Will you approve me to continue working? If they say, yeah, then you're good, all right? I know they're held accountable for how much overtime they allow. So they try to hold everybody else accountable, okay? Yeah. Yes, sir. So uh, we've had a few people doing like, uh, they'll go get their lunch on the clock, get back and then clock out and eat their lunch. Mm -hmm. So leaving the building while you're clocked in is not a, another one too. Yeah, and what he was saying uh, is that people are leaving the building, getting their lunch, then they come back and clock out. And that's also an infraction. The new attendance matrix. I want to make sure that I stress to you that this is not an HR thing where HR decided or the ninth floor decided. This is a negotiated item. Most of the people that represent you were tired of having to represent people who couldn't manage their time effectively. So they said, instead of this 12-step program where we don't know where they are in this matrix, we've cut it down to seven, okay? So once you get to under 40 hours, you get an awareness letter. Awareness letter is just an awareness letter. It's not disciplinary. We don't even have to give you, or your supervisor doesn't have to give you 24 hours notice. But everything after that is a 24-hour notice and a personnel conference, and it goes in your file. For instance, somebody's at about 44 hours. So the next time they take any time off, they're going to go under 40, right? I have suggested to assistant principals or anybody who supervises you, give them their awareness letter when they're right around 40 hours to just let them know. Some people don't know. Some of you guys know your time down to the second. Some of you guys don't know, okay, because you don't take a lot of time off. Now, when you get to zero, that's when you get 24-hour notice. You get an EAP referral. What is an EAP referral? Employee Assistance Program. You get sent to new directions. The counselor talks to you about being able to manage your time. Now, nobody wants to add insult to injury, but I'll let, me, let me give you a for instance. We had an employee who was here, got an EAP referral, went to New Directions, got to New Directions, like, this is some bull, I ain't doing this, okay? They let the principal know that he said he wasn't coming back. So then what did we have to do? We had to go out to the building and talk to him and say, yes, you are going to go back, okay? Most of the time, there's only two sessions and then you're good. But you can't just say, I'm not going to do it because the fine print says, if you don't comply, it's insubordination. 
So we worked it out. He's going back. He'll probably have one more session, and then he's good. Another part to that story that's very important is this person lost his grandkid, and he had a very sick wife. So some of your absences can be placed into the pool of family medical leave if they qualify. But you've got to communicate with employee benefits to know that. So it, when in doubt, if you have some extenuating circumstances happening in your life, communicate with employee benefits. It may be covered and not come out of your normal pool. Okay, that makes sense for everybody? This is a very tight matrix now. Once you're in the matrix, let's say you're in that matrix right now. It will take you to after the 2020-2021 school year to get out of it. Because if you get in the matrix this year, next year you get a 40-hour letter and an EAP referral, 90-day probation attendance, terminated. Three strikes and you're out. If you start the matrix this year, you get there next year and you have the same issues, three strikes and you're out. And let me say this since we have about five minutes or less left. This came into fruition because there were employees complaining that other people were abusing their attendance and absences and other people had to take on their work. And that's at all levels, from clerical to para to custodial to security. And so in order to corral that problem, the, uh, we kind of tightened things up so that a person couldn't be gone all the time and placing that burden of work on other employees. Can I ask you a question about that? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so if we are, say last year, we went under the 40, right? And we're, but we didn't go into DW. Everybody started new this year. Okay, okay. Everybody started new okay. this year. So say this year we go under the 40 and we get the letter. Okay, right here? No, not into DW. We are just in, under 40 yes. and get okay. the letter. Yes, okay, okay. Okay, so then we do fine. And next year we go under 40 again. Do we automatically jump? We automatically jump to the second step, right? Because yes. it's, the, it's the next year. Yes. Even if you're not in need, just under 40? Just under 40. Yes. Once, once okay. you get here and you start the letters, then it, then it starts. Now, I'm going to tell you what. I'm going to check that to make sure. I think okay. I'm correct, but if I'm wrong, I'm, I'm going to come back and we'll, we'll tell you. It. But I think once you hit this matrix, any of the letters, I think it starts. Right. So if you start at the A, then the next year you would automatically drop down to the 1 at the B. Yes. Okay. Yes. Keys to success on the job. Be a positive role model who helps to educate students. Success key number two, help to keep the building clean, safe, and secure. And last one, be an impactful, dependable team player who provides world-class customer service. We appreciate your time and what you do for our buildings. Thank you all.